representative of a typical like magnitude change. So here's the, the general equation that you should always start with. This equation applies for any geometry, high concentration, ultra concentration, whether it's cross flow or dead end flow. This equation will govern the, the, the flux that you expect to see changing with pressure. And it applies at, at most conditions. When um, there's certain conditions under which it does not apply, and we'll talk about that in the coming classes. So what we did yesterday is we said our numerator is our driving force here, delta P, and our denominator is essentially the resistance. So flux is equal to driving force divided by resistance. We, I mean, we see this all the time in, in electrical circuits. Uh, if you look at a, at a, we have the equation of B equals I times R for um, current. So if we just rearrange that, the current I is equal to the voltage divided by the resistance. The voltage is our driving force, the resistance is our resistance, and that's equal to the flux, the current through the electrical circuit. We see this in heat transfer, we see this in mass transfer. This equation applies, applies everywhere. So the, the general thinking here, this, this entire denominator term is the resistance that's offered. And there's two components to the resistance. There's the resistance due to the membrane itself, and then there's the resistance due to the cake building up on the membrane. And under tangential flow, that cake resistance will lead to steady state. Once the system gets going for a while, a certain amount of cake will get built up, but it will also get sheared off by the, by the tangential velocity. So that LC term, the, the thickness of the cake, it will steady out at some, some constant value once the membrane gets going for a while. That's important to realize. Initially, when you just start your membrane, you're going to get incredibly high fluxes because there's nothing blocking any of the pores. There's no cake buildup. But after a few minutes, uh, that LC builds up the thickness of the cake, and, and J, the flux, comes down and stays out. So two components to the resistance. And we're comfortable with the concept of mass transfer that we have, in many cases, the limiting resistance. One of the resistances will dominate and the others will be much smaller and almost be disregarded. And we'll see that in this problem here as well with the numbers. So the easiest way to determine what these individual resistances are, and that's exactly what part one and part two of the question were, were to isolate, uh, sorry, to quantify those resistances. Due to the membrane itself, the standard way to do that is to run a pure water test. Uh, so just, just the water itself, no, no solid component that's going to build up, so we have our resistance due to the cake term disappearing. Uh, substituting the numbers, the pressure drop across the membrane, C and P transmembrane pressure, 30,000 pascals, uh, viscosity of water in the denominator, and then the flux J that we're observing. If you work with the units, you can show that they cancel out and get meters squared per kilogram. Uh, that's one way to do it. The other way is to just use the, given up here, we had in the class a few slides into yesterday. Uh, we have the units here for RM and RC are given in meters per kilogram. So if we're calculating the units of R and dash, uh, R and dash is, is the product of the, the thickness of the membrane multiplied by RN. So meters squared per kilogram is expected as I use this. We have then the second resistance to the feed, um, uh, sorry, the, the solids building up on the membrane. So if we take our general equation, which I've simplified here with Rn dash and Rc dash, rearrange this now. We know all the terms in there except for the cake thickness, sorry, the cake resistance, Rc dash. Solve for that. Uh, this time we're using a different pressure drop. We can calculate Rc dash is 9 times 10 to the 10. Contrast that to the membrane's resistance, which is 5 times 10 to the 8. It's an order of magnitude greater. So, uh, sorry, two orders of magnitude greater. The membrane's resistance, and this is typical for microfiltration, not so for ultrafiltration, which is the next uh, one we're going to be looking at. But for microfiltration, very common that their membrane almost offers no resistance at all. And here it's two orders of magnitude. Um, the difference, if you subtract this RC from RN, it's, it's mainly you might as well just have used RC. You can almost drop out uh, the, the membrane resistance. Okay, so, so a, a substantial difference offered due to the cake. So that's, that's, that's common. 
Now, today's class, what I wanted to focus on was, uh, just to finish up the section here on microfiltration, was to look at how to estimate that resistance due to decay. There's two ways we can go about it. I'm uh, sorry, there's, there's, yeah, there's two ways we can go about it. One is the laboratory test, uh, which we just do as shown and, and described here in the board, uh, where we actually run a sample we first measure the membrane resistance and then back calculate what the cage resistance is. And that would be the best way to do it if you have the, the materials and the experimental equipment. But there are some correlations to calculate an estimate of this cake resistance. But um, the one thing is to bear in mind is that these correlations will be for a very specific set of units. And that's what a bit of this complication on this slide is about is that the correlations for RC that you find are generally expressed when flux is in the volumetric form. So we're currently using flux J in mass flux, kilograms per second per unit area. But the correlations for RC assume that you've expressed the flux J in terms of its mass flow. So, uh, sorry, in terms of its volumetric flow. So what we do is uh, we, we, we can get to that quite, quite easily. If we just take our base equation that we started with, and let's just modify it very simply by dividing the mass flow flux divided by the density of the permeate. So this is kilograms per second per meter squared divided by kilograms per meters cubed. We're going to get what we call J subscript V, our flux in volumetric form. In other words, the units there would be meters cubed per second per meter squared. Please do not simplify that. People sometimes simplify that to meters per second. It's, it's, it's pretty useless doing that. So JV then is J divided by rho. So we have to divide this side by rho as well. And we can simplify that by writing JV is equal to the pressure drop times the density, uh, sorry, times the viscosity multiplied by Rm V dash plus Rc V dash. So we just rename those, those two resistances in the denominator with this common V to emphasize the fact that these are now resistances when the flux J is expressed in its volumetric form. So the first time I read this literature, I literally spent two, three hours getting myself confused. My units weren't working out, but eventually once you figure out one textbook is working in volumetric, others in mass flux, and then you figure out what's going on. This is pretty, it's pretty simple, actually, but most of the books just tend to assume one thing and that, that you know what you're doing. Please, please be aware of this over here. So for this correlation, we're going to require that RCV be it's the equivalent of the original RC that we had, just multiplied by the permeate density. So that's what, this, what those first two lines are about. Um, the other way to interpret this cake thickness of LC is we could, if we were given the volume of the cake divided by the membrane's area, we could assume that to be the cake thickness. And that's actually what's often what can be done in practice. You run your membrane for a period of time, rather than then taking your membrane out and trying to measure the thickness of the cake buildup at multiple points on the membrane, rather just scrape all the cake off, measure the volume of that cake over the entire membrane divided by the surface area that it, it, it uh, solidified on, and then that gives you an estimate of the average thickness throughout the membrane. So that, last, that first equation up there is, is, is quite practical to use on an experimental setup. Now, this equation then that we can use to estimate the cake thickness is the common equation, RCV. So let's uh, just emphasize that RCV is, um, this is the cake thickness, LC times RC times rho. So RCV dash is the original RC we had times the cake thickness times the permeate density. So that common equation in RCV is an estimate of that resistance in the cake when we have 
the particle size diameter. So it does require us to know the particle size diameter. Um, the cell to mean diameter, you can, uh, I've given the link over there, but it, it comes back to that earlier class we had where we were estimating equivalent diameters. The cell to mean diameter is, even though your particles may not be spherical, uh, you can calculate the diameter of a particle that has the same surface to volume ratio as a sphere, and then what would that diameter of that sphere be to get the cell to mean particle diameter. So even for non-spherical particles, it's, it's a bit messy, but we can calculate the dp to use in that common relationship. The common relationship also requires that we have an estimate of the porosity or the, or the openingness of the cake, if you want to see it that way. Uh, if you're assuming spheres that are packed very tightly, the, the reasonable value is 0.4. Though you could have higher or lower porosities depending on the actual shape of the particles that you're sitting into, uh, that, you're, that are uh, taking up on the memory. But with in the absence of any any given information or any extra knowledge, you could safely assume a value of 0.4 for the porosity factor. So this this allows us then to get an estimate for this cake resistance without doing the lab experiment. But it does mean, of course, we need to know our particle size diameter. Okay, so what I, I will do here, I have an example. Um, let's see if there's enough time to finish it in, in this class. I, I hope so, and then I will, any part that I don't cover, I will post the rest of it on the website. So it's, it's not too long, but uh, then you may have one or two questions in between, so feel free to stop me. Um, if things are not clear. So the first part is, is now something that you're comfortable with based on the material we've just seen. It's a pure water test as well. So it says we do, we've done a lab. Um, the ideal case would be to do a lab experiment to determine the mass transfer resistance, but let's try to estimate here. There's, we're doing a water microfiltration with constant pressure drop of 50 kPa in a cross-flow membrane. We've given, we've given the membrane area that we're using, and with pure water at that pressure drop, we would use a flux of one kilogram per second per meter squared. So there, there's enough information there to repeat this setup that we, we just had to estimate the, the membrane uh, resistance. The second part of the question is we were given the feed now with solids at the same transmembrane pressure drop. And we're getting a lower flux, which is expected because we now have solids in that feed that are caking up against the membrane. What is an estimated thickness of the cake buildup if we've got that particle size diameter? So let's, let's do the first part of the question very quickly. That's to estimate the membrane's resistance. But what we're going to do here is I'm going to move to using the units of volumetric flux. Because what we're after here is the cake thickness LC, and to get the cake thickness, we need to uh, get an estimate of the, the cake's resistance. And the correlation we have for cake's resistance requires the flux from expressed in the volumetric form. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to estimate my membrane resistance in volumetric form as well, rather than in the usual Rm. I'm going to estimate Rmv. So the pure water test, we can write this equation here, ignoring the cake resistance, Jv is equal to the pressure drop divided by mu times Rmv dash. And if our flux was one kilogram per second per meter squared, that's our, our mass flux, our Jv is then J divided by rho, which is one kilogram per meter per second divided by a thousand is equal to the pressure drop of 50 kPa in this instance divided by the viscosity of pure water and we can then estimate RMV. The resistance offered due to membrane but we're using units this time uh, for mass for in the flux is expressed in its volumetric form. So if we rearrange that to calculate the, that resistance, we would get 5 times 10 to the 10. And this time the units are, 
are, are a little different because we're, we're working in those you know, different resistance scenes. say here then is that the flux with the feed is the JV is 0 0.065 divided by a thousand to get the permeance flux and that's equal to delta P divided by the viscosity RMV the membrane resistance plus the cage resistance so simplifying or rearranging for RCV I've ex I deliberately expanded this, uh, this not going straight to the here, to illustrate the fact that the, this term over here, you can see the tremendous difference between the mem membrane resistance and the resistance offered due to the, to the cake itself. Again, very typical that the cake's resistance is much, much greater than the resistance due to the membrane. Which is what we're, what we're after. 
So I'll just put the result up here of using a common equation with that known diameter and assuming a, por a porosity of 0.4. You can calculate that RCU from that relationship would be 4.2 times 10 to the 14. And that has units of meters, uh, inverse meters squared, due to that uh, particle size to the D And then the, the estimate of the, the cake thickness is RCB dash divided by RCB. Now we know both of those terms, and it would come up to 1.7. 1.7 millimeters would be an estimate of the cake thickness.